Hey everybody, do you want to see how we made these beautiful trinket and jewelry boxes using the black diamond ghost powders? Then stick with us and we'll make them together. This is Resin Together, where we work together to make beautiful resin art. Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to be working on making some of these uh, jewelry boxes. We got the molds in uh, just the other day. I haven't had a chance to use uh, these yet. Uh, so we're going to be working on this one. It's a nice heart with a pattern uh, on the inside, kind of a diamond pattern. Uh, with that we also got in some of these black diamond uh, ghost pigments uh, that I'm anxious to try. So this one we're going to do in the ghost red pearl. I'm actually going to uh, kind of paint that on the outside or on the inside of the mold um, and probably use some white pearl uh, pigment powder to fill that with just to see how that's going to look. Uh, this one makes kind of a teardrop lid and just a simple base. With that one we're going to do the sapphire ghost blue uh, of the ghost pigments from Black Diamond. I think we're going to just use uh, clear resin on that one to see how it turns out. Again painted on the inside. This one uh, it's like a jewelry box. It goes like that when you put the lid on it, but you pour it obviously uh, this way. With this one, I'm going to use the Ghost Gold, gold Pearl uh, painted on the inside. And I haven't decided what color for resin with that. We may do clear on that one as well. And then finally, this last one is just a small little box uh, with a lid. But again, all of them have a pattern to make facets on the inside or ridges like that one. And that one we're going to paint in the Ghost Satin Green. Uh, as we do that one. So when we paint these, and I'll start and just do the lid of this first one, uh, we take our mica powder and with it we use uh, just a simple brush. You definitely want to use one that fits the size of what you're doing, but just a brush. And we're just going to take the mica powder on the brush here. Let me move a little bit closer so you can see it. And we're just going to start painting. Um, Now, since we're not doing multiple colors, we can kind of move around with it and just get it in there. What you want to do is make sure that each of the little holes and facets gets covered and filled in with the mica powder. It'll leave almost like a film of color on each square as you fill it in. that in. Make sure you get around the edges as well so that the edges have color. the excess out so can't really tell it definitely has a shine to it now and so we're gonna come back like I said we gotta make sure we get up in the corner there and make sure it gets good coverage as well or else we'll have some blank spots on the resin kind of use the light to your advantage to see um, silicone isn't usually <laughs> very reflective, uh, so if you see a spot that's matte, then you probably need to go back and give it a paint. There we go. Down in that corner, around the edge, and there we go. So that one is ready, and we'll go ahead and do the base. For the base, I'm going to flip it inside out. Again, just gonna get like a powder on there and start painting it on. Kind of 
lot on that one, so let me spread it out a little bit. Okay, drop it and let it all go flying away. That works too. <laughs> Again, using the light to see, pick some of this up. Make sure you get all the way to the very top. Get quite so much this time. There we go. Some coming out there. there we go. Just gonna get in there, get it on the brush. Alright, let me just give it one that's over. Like I said, I'm using the light to see where we may have missed any spots, looking for dull areas that may not have got any resin. I don't think I'm going to do this because that's the inside part of it. We just want the outside to look pretty. Alright, so that one is ready to pour. So we'll set that aside and we'll clean up this little mess we made. I'm going to go ahead and paint the others and I will come back when we are ready uh, to pour the resin. Okay, so we are back and I'm ready to start pouring my resin. I have my resin all mixed up. Now I have mixed up uh, 22 ounces of uh, the uh, super clear liquid glass. Uh, this is a deep pour, so it's a two to one uh, resin. Uh, so we can do these deeper pours. Anything over, really anything more than three quarters or a quarter, half inch, you really want to use a deep pour. It takes much longer to set up, uh, but it's not going to exotherm and get hot and discolor on you or even potentially ruin your molds or catch fire. Uh, if it's poured deep enough, that tabletop resin really was never made to go too deep so be careful with that so we're ready to pour now I changed things up a little bit I decided I wanted to see what these uh, powders look like painted on so these two the red and the uh, sapphire blue ghost blue I painted on the molds but these two the ghost gold pearl and the ghost satin green I'm actually gonna mix into uh, the resin and pour because I don't want to see what the difference is so we'll start uh, with pouring our first two and I'm gonna put this in a smaller cup just to make it easier to do that now when I get a new mold I take it and I fill it with water and I write how much resin it holds on the mold so I can always know and mix up exactly as much as I need so these two 2.5 5.5 that's gonna be eight and that's actually one of these cups so let me go ahead and pour that it's just much easier to pour out of these smaller cups than it is out of the big cup. And there we go. Now the good thing about this liquid glass is it's going to release these bubbles really well. We'll have to keep coming back for at least an hour or two uh, to work on that, but for right now 
they'll be fine and they should come out just fine. resin is much more liquid so it's not gonna dome really as much as the thicker resins that we usually use for making coasters and things like that now it domes about like water so it's not gonna go very high so keep that in mind now I'm gonna trickle it down the side until that little knob on this one fills there we go and then we can go on up to the top Again, go slow, give everything time to work in and get those air bubbles around the ridge out as you pour. Just make sure on most of these molds you want to get past that inner lip and filled all the way to the top because that is usually what makes the lip for your lid <laughs> to fit correctly inside of the bottom. There we go. Make sure those are filled to the top. Yeah, they look good. And just a little bit left. Pour that back. All right, so those, there's those two taken care of. Now for the next one, this one takes seven and a half. So I'll go ahead and put that in my cup. said this one we're going to use the ghost gold pearl remember these are ghost powders so it probably isn't going to make the resin super dark but we're going to use a generous amount so we get a good effect there we go let's see how that does now these are all interference powders so they change how the light reflects off the resin Okay, so mixing that in, it comes up kind of a shimmery color that definitely has that gold tone to it, but almost a gold mother of pearl kind of color. So let's pour that in and see how that goes. I think that's going to be pretty. It's going to be a subtle effect because it's clear resin, uh, but we like to experiment just to see how things are going to look. This one and the one next to it and the heart actually all four of these are brand new molds like I said so I'm also excited to see what they look like once they come out again so we're gonna fill it up first there we go all right and then finally don't really need that cup we're gonna since we have just a little bit left in here, we're going to mix the blue satin green in our big container. No point in wasting another cup. So let's pull some of that out. Put that in. Okay, so we come back. And you can see here, it's got the green, definitely has a green shimmer to it. It kind of creates a, uh, a milky pearl 
kind of color with the green interference. So we'll pour this. And there we go. All right. So this is going to take about three days uh, for these to harden. I'm going to take the air gun and uh, just start breaking up these bubbles. Um, but it's going to be, uh, like I said, three days for it to harden. It'll stay liquid for at least a day or two. And then uh, once that, uh, once it starts to gel and everything, then we don't have to worry about the bubbles as much. Uh, so we'll come back when these are ready to unmold and show you what they look like. Alright everybody, so we're back. Uh, we're ready to unmold our uh, boxes that we've made. It's been several days for me. Uh, for you guys it'll be just a few seconds, so you didn't have to wait like I did. Uh, so we're going to go through these. So if I repeat myself, forgive me. Like I said, it's been a while, uh, so I kind of forget things. Uh, I'm not wearing gloves. Normally I would wear uh, cotton gloves, but these have cured for probably, I think it's about four days now. So they are rock solid. They're not going anywhere. So we don't have to worry about leaving fingerprints or anything uh, in these. So uh, let's get started. Now the first one was the red that we painted on to the inside. So let's see how that turned out. And uh, all of these are new molds for me. So I'm hoping these will uh, turn out good and look good. Oh yeah. Let me get the lid out. There we go. Few bubbles, but not bad. Oh, one big one right there in the in the front. Let's see how that looks together. Yeah, very subtle red uh, color, though, but very pretty. Crystal clear on the bottom. You can see through the inside. Very subtle. I like that. It's just kind of shimmery. A little bit of red. Can you see that? There we go. Yeah, so that's pretty. I like that one. All right, and this next one was the uh, Ghost Blue, I think it was. Again, we painted this one onto the outside. So let's pull the lid out. Ooh. There we go. I think that one shows up better than the red did. Still very pretty, very subtle color. There we go. Fix my mold so they don't get messed up. All right, so there's the blue. I don't know if that's showing up very well for the camera. There we go. Better. On the base. So you can see that blue really picked up there. Very pretty. Very colorful. Again, very subtle. And then just a clear bottom. You can see. Uh, very subtle, but very good looking. Definitely like that. All right, we move these out of the way. And then these last two we mixed in the uh, powder with the mold. So this one was uh, the ghost uh, green. I forget the color name, but this was the green. color. There's that. Definitely see the 
green doesn't show up, you have to really catch the light right for the green to show up. But if you can see right here in the lid, right there, it sank, but there's some, I don't know if y'all can see that, some unmixed mica powder you can see in there. So I have to be careful with that. Oh, the effect of the green isn't all that striking when you compare it to how well the blue showed up. And these are the exact same types of pigments. All right, and then finally, uh, the gold. And this is a new mold too. All three, all four of these are new. I've never used these. Uh, so this one, unfortunately you can see, I don't know if you can tell, it's a lot lower. Um, after I had set everything up, I bumped it and a lot of the uh, resin kind of spilled out all over the table. Uh, so I had to clean that up and I lost some. So um, unfortunately that messed things up a little bit. But it's the bottom so I think I can just grind that down and uh, clean that up and it'll be just fine. And everything, so mix that. And then let me get the lid out. And the lid, if you can see, was a little bit deformed. The silicone doesn't flat, so it ended up making a concave lid as well. Um, and it's off center, it's not, not level. You can you'll probably be able to tell in just a second when I try to put it together. So. There we go. Nope. There. All right, yeah, got some pieces have to trim those off but you can kind of tell it's going downhill it's not perfectly smooth uh, it's because this mold you can see it it's not square it's kind of pushed out and it's a little flimsy so it didn't hold its shape well but that's okay uh, so that one might be a lost cause because I don't think I can really do much for the way it fits it doesn't fit in there very good it's out of shape uh, again the mica powders didn't mix real well with these it was hard to tell uh, because they're almost transparent whether or not they mixed uh, but the gold definitely shows up um, I think the gold looks good but I must say uh, for the results I definitely think painting on the mica powder uh, makes a much prettier effect than mixing it in with the resin uh, these just kind of look white and if you catch it right you see some color but it wasn't as striking as the painted on now I've seen some videos and heard people talk about mixing the mica powder uh, with rubbing alcohol to make kind of a paste uh, I haven't seen the results but I'm excited to try it because I'm thinking it might uh, make it show up better and I've got a new mold uh, that is kind of like a sun catcher um, it's got some birds on it and things like that that I think will be pretty. It's uh, hung up by a chain. So I'm excited to try that and a few other things. So we have lots of th exciting uh, prog progress and, and things coming. Uh, so definitely looking forward to sharing those with you and trying to uh, get into a little bit of adding wood and doing some things like that with it. So let me know what you think in the comments. I uh, have had a few comments. I love responding and love seeing and hearing what people are doing. So please don't be shy. Most of all, if you would please like the video, uh, that helps get attention on YouTube and helps people see it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you can, if, uh, and you'll see the new videos as they come out. And of course, for everything we've used today, I will put uh, the links down in the description. Uh, if you use those links to purchase items, it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't add any increase to the price for you. I get a little bit of commission, which helps me uh, with the channel. It's a few cents per item, but Every little bit helps and it lets me make these videos and uh, do more things and try more things uh, for you guys. But most of all, I want to thank you for being with us today and I hope that uh, this has been informative and you've enjoyed it. And thank you uh, for resonating together with us.